So the first story he wrote, actually, he wrote the date that he wrote it on, and it was he wrote it on Christmas Day, 1990. But it refers to um, the drum shop, which was at Connolly's Cross in Carmanahan in 1939. This shop got its name from another shopkeeper named of Connolly, who had a shop in my father's time. And the crossroad beside the shop, known far and wide, was Connolly's shop. We as young boys assembled there on a summer evening to play skittles, and pennies pitched and tossed, and everyone chatted as the night was passing by. When I first went to the cross, you were lucky at night to see lights of a car in the sky. Lots of bicycles passing by with carabite lamps on and bicycles with no lights. If a cart on the road at night was coming from a fair, you would hear the noise of it on a frosty night a mile away. The boys that stood on the crossroads at night would know the cart and also a bicycle if it had a gear case rattling. The crossroads, which in its own particular way played a big part in our youthful years, both socially and economically, was where we learned the value of our pennies and the meaning of the old folk saying, you take care of the pennies and the pounds will take care of themselves. The shop itself was no more than ten feet square, but every inch of space was used by a short counter and shelving with a galvanised roof built on, on the street beside a lovely mud wall dwelling with roses in the hedge around the street. Several enamel signs were hung around the shop. The ones I remember well were of Mick McQuaid Tobacco and Clark's Makes Perfect Plug, Van Houten's Cocoa, Sunlight Soap, Player's Cigarettes with a Sailor on one sign, Castor Oil and Glabber Salts at the end of the shop, an old lamp oil barrel on its side, and a tap on the end to measure a pint or a quart of paraffin. Every inch of, sh- of shelving used to hold the stock of groceries, sweets, Peggy's leg, leg candy, brand- that's brandy balls, cigarettes, tobacco, snuff, spools, needles, pin, pins, pipe lids, wangs, I think they're pieces of leather. The till was kept in a red oxo box, and the IOUs were fastened at the window with clothes pegs marked on scraps of paper. Cans of sweets hung from the ceiling and you can uh, and were sold when empty now this doesn't make sense and can, and the can, oh sorry and the can was sold when empty nothing put to loss in those years when you finished your copy book in school and got a packet of sweets made out of a page in your book you called it a poke of sweets when you wanted the shop you whistled on the street and someone came out to serve and you would hear the latest news a gramophone in the kitchen was often playing and you would be invited in to dance if there was visitors around. In the winter, a few gambles on turkeys, and nights playing old games of two shillings. This house was noted for being warm in winter, because it was one of the very few mud wall houses left standing in my time. I often heard the crickets sing in this house, one of the last to have that music. I remember the corn crake sing in the meadow at the back of the shop. This meadow was called the barn meadow, You've always got a Christmas present, a packet of cigarettes and a currant loaf, more than you will get today. I saw prints of country butter for sale in this shop, and I often got a drink of the ale plant out of a jar in the kitchen window. Tobacco was in rolls called black tobacco, a knife set up on a wooden block to cut an ounce or half an ounce, around seven pence an ounce. A large player was eleven and a half pence, now it's near two pounds. I bought my first twopenny woodbine in drum shop, and you got five in open end papers in carton. If there was a bit of tobacco fell out of the roll, it was called a nook, and given to some poor person. My granny smoked a clay pipe, good for her chest. I got my first pull out of her pipe. My granny lived to 99 years of age. An old man chewing tobacco in a neighbour's kitchen could land a spit in the fire from any corner in the house. <laughs> One night he spat in the cat's eye. She jumped out over the half door. Didn't come back for a week. Now the shop's got, got yon, now the shop is long gone. No one stands at the cross where we danced all night on bonfire night. I often think how supermarkets, computers, trolleys, gadgets tick off the bill. What a change from Oxo box with the closed pegs on IOUs. 
a real takeover from FDH, Wellworths, Dunn Stores, Television, Wireless, Hotels, Bingo, Jackpots, Bungalows, Motor Cars. Now you wouldn't walk the road. So that's Paddy's recollection Absolutely of his, brilliant. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it, uh, in his inim- inimitable style, but it is, it's a lovely form of uh, his recollection because it's, it's accurate. And I think I love my son is into graphic design and he, he um, loves those enamel signs, you know, and they're worth yes, quite a lot yes, of money now. Are. So if Paddy had That's saved brilliant. those from the, from the shop, <laughs> he'd have been in, in the money in the later times. 